How's it going everybody? My name is Jim and welcome to Restoration Projects. This video is going to be an overview of this Digit EM15 3000 pound mini excavator. Uh, the first part of this video is going to be me going over the specs, kind of talking about my impressions of it, and the last part of the video will be showing it running and just kind of give you an idea of what the capabilities of it are. So what I'm doing here is I'm on this uh, job, I'm clearing out some brush. So most of the work that I'm doing here is going to be removing down limbs, blackberries, and some slight rocks. So most of it's just land clearing. Uh, the dirt, I'm not doing any digging with it. Uh, plus the dirt here has already been spread out with a dozer a couple years ago. So it's relatively soft, so it's not going to be a good representation of what this machine can do in heavier virgin soil uh, because it's so loose here. So right now we're just clearing brush. So let's get into what the machine is. So it's called a Digit EM15. And if you've never heard of Digit, that's because it doesn't really exist, if that makes sense. Uh, during a recording of this video, it's October of 2023. You can Google Digit and there's no website for it. All it is is, all the results you're gonna get is um, auctions that have this dig it brand excavator and essentially what is happening is you have these uh, manufacturers over in China that will slap different labels on these machines like dig it AKG um, industry cherry there's a handful of other names out there but there's no real company behind it it's just a name for this machine and they ship it over uh, and they send it to these auction sites and that's where a lot of these things are bought and sold as adoptions. So they'll go directly from the manufacturer in China, go over on a boat, and be unloaded at these auction places at Ritchie Brothers, and they'll be sold off there. So support-wise, warranty, it's really non-existent for these. But if you're mechanically inclined, these are actually a really good buy for the money. And the reason being is it's powered by a 13.5 horsepower Briggs & Stratton single uh, cylinder motor. Uh, it's a gasoline powered motor, but simple, easy to work on. The pump in this is a little bit bigger than what you find in the 2,000 pound units. So it's a little bit more volume and uh, it allows you to swing the machine and move different functions of it at the same time. This will result in faster cycle times and just smoother operation. Uh, another difference with this machine versus the uh, one ton units is it has pilot controls. Now I'm probably going to butcher this but the general concept of a pilot control is the joysticks on each side of me there that run the boom and uh, spin the turntable. They have hydraulic pressure coming to them and then they in turn run sm small valves that send that hydraulic pressure down to a larger valve bank and that larger valve, valve bank is actually what is actuated to send the main hydraulic pressure to the cylinders to lift the boom, curl the bucket, spin the uh, table, and it provides a little bit smoother operation. Now compared to like a Kubota, a Yamar, or a bigger excavator, it's not as smooth, it's not as precise, but it is more refined and smoother than what you find on a one ton excavator where you are running the valve control body with the handles. So it does add a little bit of uh, finesse where there wasn't any to begin with with the 2000 pound units. So those are the kind of main differences is just the pilot controls and bigger pump. Obviously it is a bigger machine so you have a thousand pounds more weight than a one ton unit and a little bit wider footprint and a little bit longer footprint. And I can say that with 100% certainty that that thousand pounds and bigger footprint makes a huge difference. If you're looking at buying a mini excavator, these bigger excavators by a thousand pounds is just, it's, it's night and day difference. Uh, it is better uh, suited, I should say, or better balanced for the amount of power that these machines have. The 2,000 pound units, they're overpowered, grossly overpowered. Where this one, it feels a lot more balanced, a lot more comfortable to run, and you're not being shaken as much because it's not such a violent, jolty action. It's a lot smoother. So you just have more mass to move. Also, I could reach over the side, grab a load, pick it up, spin it around, 
and I didn't feel unstable or unsafe running it. So for just safety and comfort, uh, this is a lot more comfortable. Obviously it's a bigger machine, so it's not gonna fit in as many tight places as a 2,000 pound unit. But you know, if you're not having to go between gates and trying to get into really narrow spots, um, this is a good little machine. So right here, what I'm doing is I took off the bucket. This has a quick change coupler on it and I'm putting on a root rake and it just clicks into place here. I grab my impact uh, driver there and I'm uh, just, you have a bolt that you turn and that will uh, engage or disengage the quick coupler. So now that we have the root rake on, uh, it'll be a little bit easier to pick up brush. So price point on these, what are these things going for? Uh, you see them at auctions from the high sixes, mid sevens, and something to be aware of too at auctions is you're also going to be seeing, uh, or the thing that you don't see, is the buyer's fee. So there's a t usually at all machinery auctions, there's a 10% buyer's fee that is applied to each machine. So you spend $6,000, you have to pay $6,600 to uh, walk out the door with that machine. So uh, just some hidden costs there. Uh, these digots, uh, mainly I see them at auctions. Um, they're not as popular out there. There's not as many of these as the 110 machines. And uh, I'm not sure why. I don't know if that's cost of shipping, cost of manufacturing, or if they just haven't taken off yet. Um, but for homeowners, contractors, um, I'd be really looking at these things. If you are wanting a machine that is sub $10,000 that you can get attachments for and is just simple, easy to work on, this would be definitely something to look into. They're not as robust as a Kubota or another name brand machine, but you know that going into it. You know what you're buying. You're buying a lighter duty, not a heavy duty uh, excavator. And I think this thing is very capable for its size. I mean, you know, I'm grabbing big piles, granted they're limbs and stuff, and it's relatively dry out, but I'm still moving a lot of material and I'm able to pile it all up relatively quickly. So this is saving me a lot of work here. Um, as far as reliability, none of the stuff that I've read is, there's nothing that's jumped out as a big issue with these things. Um, the biggest problem I've read about these is people not changing the oil on the uh, motors when they're supposed to. So <clears throat> read the manufacturer's specs, I believe it's like five hours, you're supposed to change the oil from that break-in cycle. And that break-in cycle, since these motors don't have a oil filter in them, you have all the metal particles that happen to come off the motor it's, as it's being broken in. It's part of the machining process, not just part of the break-in process. You get little specks of metal and other debris in the oil. And it's suspended in that oil, and as the machine's running, that debris can act like, um, think of sandpaper, or liquid sandpaper, a lapping compound, if you will. And it will start to damage the inside of that motor. So once you've run it for a couple hours, change out that oil, put fresh oil in there, and that will help the longevity of the motor. One question I get asked a lot about these machines is, uh, what about parts? How hard is it to source parts for these? And the answer is it's very easy. These machines are built with off-the-shelf parts. There's nothing proprietary about them. There's nothing that is, quote, hard to get. Uh, say I spin this boom out there, I have it fully extended, I swing it out and I smash it into a tree and I build, bend the hydraulic cylinder. I can go on Amazon and find a replacement hydraulic cylinder and have it shipped to my house in two days. I don't even have to leave my house. Hydraulic hoses and the hydraulic repair hose shop can fix those. Uh, the pumps on them, they are a gear pump and I can find, I can look up the serial number on it and it'll show me stuff off Alibaba, off eBay, off uh, MSC Direct. So um, there's many ways to get the parts for this. So you're not, you're not going to be stranded. You're going to be able to find a replacement component that will go in there and do the job. Same thing for the drive motors. You blow up, say a drive motor blows a seal or has a catastrophic failure. <clears throat> you can get 
new drive motors for these. These are not impossible to find. So it's kind of a, a little bit of a rest assured that you'll be able to find parts for them. And this is kind of the trade-off for these smaller machines is you're paying less up front, but knowing that there's no warranty support, there's no uh, service department, it's, it's gonna be on you. Or if you have a mechanic that you can take it to, then you know it's gonna be on that mechanic. But you're paying less cost up front and you're taking on that responsibility of saying, hey, you know what, if something goes wrong, I can fix it. Say if the motor blows up. Well, I can go to Harbor Freight and buy the Harbor Freight brand of motor and uh, put it in there. It's pretty much a direct bolt in. Um, so that's all the big moving components of this. Thing. Probably the hardest thing to find for this would be tracks, but <clears throat> then again, you can find the tracks for these. They're not impossible to find. I've looked them up online. You can order them. They're probably not going to be coming second day or uh, one day shipping with Amazon, but you can find them. So your cost savings with this is also the DIY factor of, hey, I can do the re uh, repairs myself, and I understand that this is not a uh, high-end machine. And I, I use high-end machine kind of loosely. Every machine out there, I don't care if it's Cat, John Deere, Kubota, Yanmar, all these machines are going to break down at some point. The question is, do you want to pay a ton of money up front for like a Sani or something with a five-year, 5,000-hour warranty and have that peace of mind that if it breaks, you can have a technician come out there and do the work for you? Or do you want to pay less up front and when something breaks, you know that, hey, I'm going to have to shell out a couple hundred dollars for a part, but I'm still money ahead having one of these machines versus a comparable size name brand one. Hopefully this sheds some light on these excavators that you see popping up out there. And depending on when you watch this video, it will, uh, the relevancy of it will depend. Uh, who knows in a couple of years if these things are going to, you know, fade out or if they're going to be just become more and more popular. Um, I personally think that they're going to become more and more popular because people want a option uh, for a machine that has that lower price point, but, uh, that allows that end user to say, hey, I'm going to take on the responsibility of if I have to work on it, I'm okay with that. Um, and that's just something, too, that's a little bit of a dying thing out there, like the right to repair. Like a lot of manufacturers, you name it from, you know, electronics to machines to vehicles that we drive, um, everything's proprietary. And so there's also something that's kind of nice and refreshing about having a machine that is so simple that it allows you the option to um, repair it. And I know that sounds kind of crazy, and just hearing myself say that, I'm kind of just shaking my head, but uh, there's something that's nice about that, that I can buy something that's so simple that I can repair it. And the fact that that is starting to be less and less of a common thing, um, well, it, it is what it is, just the world we live in. So uh, the rest of this video is just gonna be showing this machine working. Uh, I've shot it in 2x speed, most of it from here on out. Um, it gives you an idea of what it can do if you really want to see like speed wise, 8 for exact, just slow the video down on this uh, YouTube platform and it will give you a you know real time view, but um, I figure 2x speed it gives you a good idea of what you can do with this machine and it's just kind of going over me clearing this brush, stacking it, stacking some uh, you know logs and branches so hopefully you guys got something out of the video and uh thank you guys for watching enjoy the rest of it